Mr. Leonard put in chat if you have any questions. Coach? All right, guys, tell the truth Monday. You know, we started with minus two, and the turnover ratio was unusual for our team. We were plus six going into the game. Those turnovers turned into 21 points really fast. Our defense was playing the best it's played for a while, uh, for a quarter. Obviously, we got to play for 60 minutes. I was really disappointed with the playoff offensive line. I thought we'd play a lot better. Uh, only had 32 yards rushing. Gave up four sacks. And, you know, a lot of that was uh, one on one blocking, physicality. And uh, disappointed in that. The execution of the offense could have been a lot better. We could have called better plays. Uh, and we didn't call our best game. We didn't do our best game as a staff. And uh, just tell the truth about it. On defense, they had 206 yards rushing. We had zero sacks. We got beat at the line of scrimmage. Uh, they came after us, and uh, we didn't play well in the line of scrimmage. They had 300 yards passing, nine explosive plays. We're giving up 33 points per game on defense. Uh, that's, it's unacceptable. We got we got to get it fixed. We got to find a way to get it fixed. On special team, uh, kickoff return. Trey Palmer become, is a positive right now for us. Our kickoff return team is doing really well, and Zach Van Rosenberg continues to punt uh, the ball very well. Well, that's the stuff I'm gonna tell the team today. So I'm telling you guys. Uh, this week is going to be about LSU and a little, little bit about Alabama. Starting on Alabama, we've got to fix us first. Uh, today will be a Tell the Truth Monday. Tomorrow they have the whole day off. Wednesday will be a Tuesday practice on Alabama, and Thursday will be a Wednesday practice on Alabama third down. And they'll have Friday and Saturday and Sunday off. Any questions? Hey, Coach o, Garland Gillen, Fox State, New Orleans. Can you give me um, – the development of this week with Miles Brennan. How yeah. are you going to try to speed him up? And is he, what, what days is he going to practice? This yeah, we, we, we're going to throw the ball with him a little bit today. He's going to try to get into the offense, see what he can do. Uh, he's not ready yet. Uh, it's day by day. And I don't know if he's going to be ready for the Alabama game. I, I think we'll know a little bit more next week. Uh, we're going to try to let him do a couple things today, see how he can do it. We can't hear you. Um, we'll go to Brody. Hey, Ed, I mean, obviously, you know, you've been turnarounds as interim at USC. You've been turnarounds at LSU. I guess if there's any kind of lessons you can take from some of those past experiences mm -hmm. in this season right now. Yeah. You know, in my mind, I'm building, we're building a championship program. We're going to be a championship team. Uh, we're going through some, some uh, growing pains right now. I know it. We've got some young players. Uh, we got some new coaches that have been on our staff for a short time, didn't have spring ball to put in their system. Not an excuse. You know, this is the SEC. And the other coaches had the same amount of time. So, But I know this in my mind. We have a plan here. I know the people surrounding me are very supportive. Uh, we just had one of the best teams in college football last year. Uh, we're not that far away. Uh, we've got to get better coaches. We've got to get better players. And this is LSU, and we're, and we're going to do that. Hey, Coach Bree Anderson, Tiger TV. Um, so we saw that y'all relied a lot on the run game against South Carolina. It was very successful, but it wasn't really as successful against Auburn. So do you think, like, from here on out, are y'all going to rely more or less on the run game? We have to. We had a meeting about it today. We have to have a, um, a different variety of runs. We have to use our running backs. Our offensive line has to block better. I mean, uh, we're going to block one of the best fronts in football. Coming up, so we got to make some improvement uh, in the run game. We got to do some different stuff to get the ball uh, to our best players and uh, take the pressure off our young quarterbacks. Let me try this again. Ed, can you hear me? Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, and kind of along with a couple of questions ago, I mean, I'm not sure how similar this one feels to the Mississippi State game a couple of years ago, but. Where, where do you go yeah. the days after to, yeah. to try to respond to a loss like this? Yeah, you got to dig deep. You got to dig deep, man. It, it hurts. It hurts everybody, but I'm the leader. I'm going to be positive around football players. I'm going to show them the film. We'll tell them where we could have coached better. We'll tell them where we got to execute better. Uh, we got we to make better in-game adjustments. we just got to continue to grow. But I'm going to be positive, believe in our staff, just like I did after the Mississippi State game. We're going to make adjustments like we need to. We're going to look at our roster management and uh, see where we need to get better at our roster and develop guys, ask guys to stay. You know, 
we got an extra year with these guys, some of these guys, I want them to stay, see if I can have them stay, have a mature team next year. And I know I'm building a championship team. There's no doubt in my mind. Hey, Coach, uh, you know, you mentioned the nine explosive plays that Auburn had. You know, just, that's kind of been a trend all season. What do you think has been kind of a common denominator for why that's just continued to be a problem this season? You know, I think uh, missed assignments, okay, uh, confusion for sure, uh, and then execution. Guys just not doing their job. I mean, and some, some of the plays that uh, Auburn scored on us, we ran the exa same exact plays in practice with the same exact people. Some of the stuff was new, and the stuff that's new, we got to make better adjustments on. So it's a combination of everything, and yes, it's been a common factor in every game. And uh, going back to the quarterback situation, uh, if Miles is healthy, obviously he's going to be your guy, but is it a, is it a competition? Is it, is it a very spirited competition between the two freshmen? And is it any different now than it was before? I mean, has it been more? Has it been like a competition each week to see who's going to be the starter? Yeah. And is it, is it the same as it was before this game or not? No, it you know it's different. You know, uh, we expected TJ to take another step, and obviously he didn't. He struggled. You know, he's a freshman. I can't put that on him. You know, and then. You know, especially going on the road, it wasn't a hostile crowd, but it, it was different. And uh, so, but, but if Miles can't practice, we're gonna see who's better, TJ or Max. Max went in there and did a fine job. So they're gonna they're gonna compete. Uh, there's gonna be a competition. Hopefully, Miles is ready. If not, I'm gonna have them compete and see who practices better. Then we'll see what happens. If, if TJ would have played well, obviously he'd have had it locked up, you know. But uh, he didn't, and uh, uh, Max went in there and did a good job. So yeah, it's open competition. Hey, Coach, it Ron Garland again. Traditionally, the bye week is when you heat up a little more recruiting, maybe. Yeah. You got silent there, Garland. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, sorry, I got unmuted again. Oh. Um, this past weekend, you, you had two uh, significant uh, commitments to the program. I obviously can't talk to them by name. But what are you trying to focus on these last few spots? And yeah. are the kids worried at all that it, the, the – the, the product on the field doesn't look as good, or, is that, or they don't worry about that because that's going to be next year when they come to LSU. You know what? You know, those guys still remember that championship team. They still remember a lot of things. This is LSU. The guys that want to come here, see an opportunity to play, they watch it on tape and say, you know what? Hey, I can go and help my team. They still love the Tigers. You know, we've had relationships with these guys for two years, so I, think, I don't think this is going to affect it much. Now, it may affect a couple of guys. Uh, this week, you know, we went over our roster management. I had a great meeting with my recruiting staff, went over specific needs that we need, whether it be in high school, whether it be in junior college or graduate transfers. Uh, we've been great on graduate transfers here. We're going to continue to look at them. And I do believe, Garland, one of our biggest things in roster management is now that we have the extra year, is keeping a lot of guys for maturity for next year. I miss going out on the road. I like to be going out on the road, but you know, we only got like five spots left in recruiting, and uh, we got a lot of guys that want to come. So we, I think we ranked fourth in the country. Uh, obviously, we're very pleased what happened this weekend. It was a big battle. I got to give credit to Kevin Falk and, and uh, Corey Raymond and, and Derek Panansky. Those guys did a tremendous job, and it's always going to be a fight to keep our best players in Louisiana. Hey, Coach O, Jared Joseph, Fox 44. I know earlier in the season before the first open date, you were talking about simplifying the defense mm -hmm. and working on communication. And now, heading into this next one, what might be the avenue you would help um, get the defense you back know, on track? You know, it, about, about eye discipline, about gap fix. We simplified about as much as we can simplify, to be honest with you. And now it's either change a couple of things up to make it easier for our guys, play something different, or whatever we're going to play, we've got to make sure we master it. And then, uh, you know, if you play the same defense, people are going to have a game plan against you. And you better be good or you better have some adjustments. And that's the point where we're at. I think we need to make better adjustments uh, for our players. And I think our players, that once they know what to do, they've got to have great eye discipline and execute. Uh, hey, Coach, this is Shay Dixon with 24-7 Sports. Um, what's your assessment been of, of maybe at times when you all been down, the energy level of the team, the sidelines, and then how as a coaching staff do you kind of address it when you see things that yeah. you don't kind of think vibe? Yeah, you know, it's something we gotta, we got to fix. You know, this is a young team, and, and look, it's 0-0 zero, zero the first quarter. we got to fight for 60 minutes, and, and when adversity hits, we got to keep on fighting. And that's been a mark of our team since I've been here. 
We were down 20 to nothing against Auburn and came back and beat them. So it's a young team. Uh, I'm going to address it today about fighting throughout the game, about staying enthusiastic throughout the team and believing. We have to do that. But you know what? There's a lot of young guys on this team that I have to teach that to. They don't know that yet. Hey, Adam, I'm just curious. I guess how has Miles just kind of handled everything the last few weeks, and how has he been with those freshman quarterbacks? He's been great, but, you know, he – he, he wants to play. I mean, there's no question he's frustrated. Uh, he, he did everything he can do with Jack. He's doing all the studying. He's been around. Those guys love him. They're like brothers. He's been fantastic. Hey, Coach. This is uh, Josh Sibley with uh, Louisiana Brown Football. Um, you talked on Saturday about evaluation uh, of everybody, the staff and the coaching. Um, uh, has there been any, and you previously said about having two coaches in the press box or in the in the box. Um, has there been any talk about possibly moving Coach Pelini up to that uh, uh, that second seat and, and possibly moving Coach Shanahan down to the field? Uh, not really. Uh, I like I like Coach Shanahan up there in the box uh, to be able to see everything. He calls the third down plays. He's up there. Uh, Bo f feels more comfortable on the field. So to be honest with you, there's been no discussion there. And I don't think it would make a difference, to be honest with you. Hey, Coach. Steve Moulton, WZZN. Uh, from what you saw on the tape, what are the biggest issues with your run-stopping capability on the defensive side, Coach? Yeah, physicality. Uh, they ran in between the tackles. The gap fits. Physicality. Uh, you know, they ran a lot of counters, a lot of powers. There's some double teams. We were out of our gaps. We got knocked out of our gaps. Uh, we were arm tackling. We weren't tackling very well. Uh, a lot of yards after contact in between the tackles, and that's one of the things that we had to stop. We knew that going into the game. When they got on the perimeter, we made some mistakes. Uh, we gave them some big runs on the perimeter. We had some mental errors. So I think it was the biggest thing, Steve, was physicality. We got out physical. Questions for Coach Show. Thank you. Go Tigers. Got two, got two more, Coach. All right. Sorry about that, Ed. Um, All right. Just, you talked about you know this week just needing to fix LSU, and we've talked about a lot of things that you've been wanting. What are going to be kind of be your biggest focuses this week as y'all head into the fight? You know, gap fits. Gap fits. We play. I just watched Alabama's offensive line. It'll be the strongest and, and Najee, the best run game we faced. In a couple of years, here. run fits, physicality, playing blocks, being in the right place. Uh, I think that's the first thing we're going to start on defense. Then I discipline. You know, um, make sure that we give them all of those bunch splits and the crossing routes and all the things that have given us problems. We have to fix it. It's on tape. Uh, it's a copycat league. People are going to do it. On offense, we've got to find different ways to run the football. And then we got to be more creative with the quarterbacks that we have, do the things that they can do. And, uh, Ed, you, you've been a player and a coach, I mean, after after losses. I, I'm, I'm wondering if this year's any different, you know, I, with any restrictions and, and pandemics and such. Like, I don't know, players, coaches just need to get out, go, I don't know, blow off some steam. I don't know how, <laughs> just handling environment on the inside. Does that, yeah. does that change anything at all? Yeah, well, I go jog every day, so I enjoy my jog. I'm sure the players get out, and you know, I think I think the, uh, the open date uh, tomorrow they have the day off. I think that uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday will give everybody a time to reflect, maybe restart, press the restart button, and I know our guys by next Monday are going to be fired up to play out Alabama. So I'm not worried about motivation. I think this team's going to stay together. I'm not worried about dissension at all. This coaching staff's together. Uh, I feel positive about what's going on. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, guys.